I, I think at this point in time it's uh, opportune to recap uh, some of the events that have happened over the last nine days. This is day number nine of the controversy and uh, I, I think everybody was collectively hoping that uh, this week uh, would ultimately see um, some form of light at the end of the tunnel and moving on of this issue because at the heart behind all that is going on, I think there's a fundamental worry and concern for all of us uh, in that uh, the two major pillars of our justice system, uh, namely on Garda Síochána and the Garda Ombudsman, uh, are in under sustained uh, spotlight from all of us uh, for all the wrong reasons. And I think we all uh, want to see a strong Garda Síochána, a strong Ombudsman, and we all want to support them and work with them as best we can. And part of the narrative that has been going on for the last uh, nine days has to be to try and create sides. Uh, which side are you on? Are you on GSOC's side? Are you on the Garda Síochána's side? Are you on the Minister's side? Whose side are you on? We're all on the same side. And I think that needs to be said. Um, members of Garda Síochána have been in touch with me, as I'm, I'm sure they've been in touch with deputies right around this house, uh, concerned about uh, what broke in the newspapers last Sunday week. Um, I'm sure the staff down in GSOC obviously are concerned. Uh, so we all want to pull together and try and get it sorted out. Um, but unfortunately, we're here now at day nine and it's still raging uh, ahead. And I think today's announcement, uh, which has yet to be uh, further fleshed out, is a little bit underwhelming, uh, to say the least. Um, Minister. But I'll get to that in a minute. Now, the narrative over the last couple of days, the tone was set by the Taoiseach uh, in saying publicly on the airwaves that GSOC had to level with the Minister. And I think that was most disappointing. And then we had the public expression of regret by GSOC uh, having paid a visit to your office, Minister. A and again, I think that served to undermine um, GSOC's independence. I said that, I asked Simon O'Brien that uh, at the committee meeting last uh, Wednesday evening. A and I think the public perception was uh, that their independence was undermined. And that's on the record. And then we had the Garda Commissioner publicly seeking clarification arising from a GSOC statement early in the controversy. And then we had the GRA and the AGSI looking for the Ombudsman to resign. And it was all very unseemly. And the public didn't like it. I don't think any of us liked it. And I think a lot of what the narrative, uh, particularly coming from government, just wasn't helpful. I've said it before, and I'm just putting it on the record here again. I want to compliment uh, the three-member uh, Ombudsman Commission. Uh, they came before the committee, and I thought they were uh, very impressive in their forthrightness. And they have a very, very difficult job to do. And they need to be supported uh, at every opportunity by us as legislators, as do every single uh, independent office which is established by way of statute in this state. And you wouldn't have seen, and I hope we will never see uh, from the government or from any government uh, like we've seen over the last number of days, uh, an attack on the independence uh, by way of the Taoiseach uh, publicly um, carpeting GSOC. I hope we never see it again. Now, I think GSOC made a number of uh, valuable interventions in the debate during the week. And we've had three or four appearances on prime time. Uh, Kieran Fitzgerald came in as an honest broker, and you quoted him yourself, Minister, in your uh, contribution there. And you spoke yourself last uh, Thursday evening, I think, on prime time, you, you appeared yourself. And you should have expressed confidence in uh, Simon O'Brien. And I know you said uh, the following day in Templemore that you would express confidence in the, in the three-person body, in the three commissioners as a commission as a whole. But I, I think, you know, when the public are watching this, uh, the first impressions, you know, are ones that resonate and stick with people. And if they see the Minister for Justice of the day uh, failing to express confidence in the chairman of the commission, I think it's very regrettable. Now, I think we have to remind ourselves, too, that this is against the backdrop of GSOC having to take to the public airwaves 
uh, over the last number of months, seeking an increase in the, in the powers available to them by way of legislation under the 2005 Garda Sheikhan Act. It, it was quite amazing, I think, really, to listen to um, Kieran Fitzgerald and to Simon O'Brien when they did take to the airwaves on radio and television, calling for the necessary increase in their powers. And obviously, obviously it was falling on deaf ears, Minister, within your department. I mean, why would they have to take to the public airwaves to articulate their concerns in terms of uh, the, the ramping up of the legislation to allow them to do their job effectively? Why would they have to take to the public airwaves if they'd been in there asking you uh, privately or through the official channels for that? Uh, it obviously wasn't forthcoming. That's the conclusion that anyone, it's the only conclusion that anybody can draw from that. Now, we published a bill today, Minister, which does exactly uh, what GSOC are looking for over the last number of months. It will provide the scrutiny and oversight of the Garda Commissioner as Chief of Police. He's already accountable to the PAC for the financial side of the, the operation. It will also allow uh, serving members of Angarda Shiakana to refer matters directly to GSOC, which are currently not allowed to do. It will give them the access to Pulse, which they need. It's ironic that they have the full powers uh, of, uh, of, of inquiry under the legislation, but yet they're, they're limited and prohibited in terms of their access to, to Pulse. Did you hear what you said about I, I heard what you said about it last week, and I'll, I'll respond to that in a minute. Two weeks. And, and finally, to be able to inquire into policies and procedure, um, which would uh, hopefully uh, serve to fending off complaints and dealing with, you know, averting problems before they ever arise. So that's what we've done. We're trying to play a constructive role in relation to that. And I think you should take that piece of legislation and enact it ASAP. And if there are further, more far-reaching reforms that you've got uh, in the back of your head that you haven't told us about, but they're the four basic requirements. And Conor Brady, former commissioner, he's been articulating uh, those points for um, a long time. New law loan, you heard her yourself at the weekend, I'm sure. But, I mean, I mean, Minister, all of this is against the backdrop of the disastrous handling of the whole penalty points fiasco by you. I mean, let's call a spade a spade. You've, you finally referred the penalty points issue to GSOC. And we raised it in here on oral PQs um, last week or a number of days ago, whenever we had our last session here. And you didn't tell us what had changed in your mind to now decide to refer it to GSOC when you could have referred it in the first instance to GSOC. And I think you need to put it on the record as to why uh, you didn't do that in the first instance. And I think it will be very interesting to see uh, the Garda Inspectorate report into the whole penalty points uh, issue when it comes out, because I understand that they have compiled a, a fairly comprehensive report which will be quite revealing uh, when that hopefully sees the light of day and goes to inform us. And then, Minister, this is all further against the backdrop of the confidential recipient. Now, you're going to have to, to own up and man up to the problem here in relation to the confidential recipient. Now, the politics side of it is, is uh, really becoming irrelevant, the fact that he's a supporter and all that kind of stuff. But the way that that man spoke to the whistleblower and what he said to him in, in terms of uh, what you would uh, try to do to him, which is now on the record of the House uh, being a transcript, uh, being a section of the transcript from the whistleblower, is hugely, hugely, hugely disturbing. And the whistleblower used the channels he used all the channels, and the same as GSOC, rather than being the victim, he was turned into the villain. And, and that's hugely concerning. And Minister, it's very regrettable that you haven't uh, concerned yourself enough uh, to show concern in any of your public utterances uh, in relation to the whistleblower controversy around the penalty points. Uh, you haven't uh, given any indication that you were genuinely and humanely concerned about the treatment that that man has come up against when he tried to use the official channels. And the Taoiseach, by the way, came in here and said also that he didn't cooperate with officialdom and with the channels. And I think that's 
That's a very serious statement out of the Taoiseach also because it's completely misinformed. And by the way, the whistleblower uh, communicated and attempted to communicate with the Department of the Taoiseach on many occasions. Uh, and that's even more alarming, uh, puts the Taoiseach statement I into more uh, of an alarming context. Now, in relation to the inquiry, the people of Ireland re rejected your referendum in relation to your Oireachtas inquiries. And what you have announced today, Minister, because you haven't given us a whole pile of detail, you know, it's nearly another form, it's, it's nearly a form of a ministerial inquiry rather than an independent inquiry. Because it's, you're appointing a judge, a High Court judge, to inquire, is all you have told us. I have your statement here, it's in the middle of it. In light of the above, it was agreed at Cabinet today to appoint a High Court judge to inquire into all relevant matters. Now, I was asked today that I welcome it. What I'll welcome is when this uh, controversy is dealt with satisfactory, satisfactorily and uh, conclusively. But we don't seem to be getting that. It's a step in the right direction. I'll say that all right. But we want to see the details. And you haven't given us any details. Now, Minister, you spoke earlier and you said when you spoke earlier, you didn't address uh, what is in the Sinn Féin motion and what was in our call on Monday of last week was to establish, uh, under the very effective 2004 uh, legislation, a commission of investigation. It has been, huge, it has been shown to be a hugely successful um, mechanism for conducting an inquiry in, in this country. There's many examples of it out there. And you didn't address uh, in your contribution earlier on why you wouldn't uh, use that uh, vehicle. You also said that there were false claims and allegations that you misled the House. Oh, Minister, in fairness, you know, you spoke last Tuesday evening on, on our statements here and you said that there was no evidence of unauthorised technical or electronic surveillance was found. You went on and along and you said it was unfortunate that Ungarda Siakana found themselves to be subject to what appears to be completely baseless innuendo. And then you went on to say that no information had been furnished, furnished you. I won't read it all back into the record. But why didn't, you, why didn't you tell us, Minister, what was in the briefing which GSOC gave you? I mean, that was hugely important. A, a, a three-page brief which uh, came uh, to the committee, which is now in the public domain, which showed that you were uh, absolutely informed that they had opened a public interest investigation is hugely relevant to the, to the debate and to the statements which are happening two minutes uh, here and, and you choose uh, not to do it. Uh, and I think uh, that's a very serious matter, Minister. And you can dismiss it away and you can uh, try and deflect it that it's uh, false allegations. It's not false allegations. We didn't write your statement, we didn't deliver your statement here last Tuesday, and we didn't prepare the GSOC briefing note which you had. But you choose to cut it and parch it and insert and slant your own interpretation on it, and keeping with the narrative that was there all week, nothing to see here, lads, move along. And it just, unfortunately, it caught up with you. Now, we called last Monday for an inquiry under the Commissions of Investigation Act 2004, headed by a High Court judge, uh, abate, uh, assisted by a person who has technical expertise in the technology and surveillance, and also by, possibly by a, a policing expert from outside the state. But what are we getting? All we know at the moment is a judge to inquire. Will there be compelability? Who will set the terms of reference yourself? Will the report come back to who? Will it come back to the doll? Will it come back to the minister? Will you appear before it yourself, minister? So all the outstanding questions are out there. But what it appears, what it appears when we stand here tonight on Tuesday evening is that you're trying to manage the process the whole way along. If you're sending, setting up a truly independent inquiry, well then it has to be independent of you. And that is why the 2004 legislation is there. But if you have a judge uh, who's not uh, sufficiently resourced, who's constrained by the terms of reference, uh, who has to report to yourself and not to the Oireachtas, well then, a lot of questions will remain in people's minds, a lot of doubts will remain in people's minds, because they've seen how you've acted, 
in the past. They see how he acted in the last uh, eight to nine to ten days in terms of the narrative. A and people are concerned. Thank so you, you have the problem with the outstanding question about the bugging and the surveillance. And you can talk about the Wi-Fi and all the rest. But the 1 a.m. Uh, incident in the middle of the night is the one that's sticking with people. And then you've had your attempts at trying to create a diversion. Thank you, Deputy. You know, it's some sort of, let's cover away from the substance of the matter. Engage in, a, you know, a camouflage and a, and a deflection away from uh, what is happening. Thank you, Deputy. And you saw it with very mass as well, Deputy. by the way. Deputy, I have to call it was an effort to, in the last two days to try and spread it very mass. Yeah. And I think that's hugely concerning also. So, Minister, Margaret, thank we you. don't want to cover up. We want an independent investigation under the Commission of Investigations Act of 2004. Thank you, Deputy. No cover up. The next, uh,